Good evening, and before we begin, I just want to thank you for coming to our reschedule for this meeting. Um, this is a meeting that we have to have in a timely uh, manner because we need to uh, take a final look at the budget that we agreed upon. I get to get it to the lawyer and every, everything in time, so thank you for bringing the element after the storm. Um, do you see the energy punch? Uh, 
both students, both schools would be unable to support teachers with movement breaks. Their teachers would be unable to fill in when staff is out and they are unable, they'd be unable to mentor and provide incentives, which are important to the newly adopted PDX incentive, included but not limited to Northbrook Elementary's Running Club, Kindergarten Running Club, Cool Hut, which has evolved into a community event in Northbrook. And um, I think that that can be started with an awesome. I just kind of okay. chopped a little bit to make sure. Yes, you got it. Yes, you got it. Yes, you got it. Yes, you got it. Joseph Forte. I live on uh, 6 Chadmore Lane in North Berwick. I have two kids in the school system. Um, I'm here to speak today on behalf of over 70 people who have signed a petition expressing their outrage at all of the proposed cuts that are about to be approved tonight um, to the budgets that our administrators have said they need in order to continue funding our schools. Um, and we know, based on the last meeting, that our schools are underfunded compared to the rest of the county. Uh, and um, uh, the money is being used well. Um, our, our, our test scores are above what you would expect given those funding levels. Um, and so, you know, the teachers are going to be out of a job. The current teachers that are there are going to be stretched even thinner. Um, our students are going to bear the brunt of those cuts. And uh, all for a very small sum for the average taxpayer. I mean, a double digit sum. What is that? A tank of gas? Uh, a modest day out. Uh, at a restaurant, and we're going to plunge our schools into chaos for the sake of that. So, um, if you'd like to see the petition and the full text and a full explanation, I'd be glad to provide that to you. And if you have questions, I'd be glad to answer that as well. Do you have a copy of it that we can pass around? Yep. Okay. It's double sided. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And the, it's the. It's continuously being added to, so it may be up to 100 signatures right now. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Other input at this time? Okay. Moving on to the board adoption of budget, fiscal year 25 district budget. Okay. Um, before we start with the budget, we invited Principal Archibald back um, to talk through um, his plans for the use of the funds that um, we discussed last, last meeting. And looking for all the papers. <laughs> um, I have a copy of the document. And I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity to, to talk about Noble Middle School's uh, three-year plan uh, to improve school culture and climate and as well as to increase academic gains for all students. So this, is, this plan is a working document uh, in the early stages of development and will require more collaboration and a feedback cycle as we implement it. But I want to be clear that this conversation did not start last week. This is something that we've been talking about throughout the year. And so this is just an opportunity to talk to you folks about it. So there are two main goals that we're going to be looking at um, when we're, we're talking about normal middle school. So the first goal is to cultivate a positive and inclusive school climate by enhancing multi-tiered proactive systems and programs that effectively manage and address challenging behaviors while incorporating family and community engagement. The second goal is to enhance instructional effectiveness by elevating lesson planning practices across all grade levels and subjects differentiated for all ability levels with a focus on tier one intervention strategies, empower teachers to develop and implement standards aligned dif differentiated lesson plans that incorporate engaging strategies and appropriate learning activities for all students. <coughs> so we'll have three total positions that will address these goals. And the first two positions are multi-tiered systems of support interventionists, so MTSS, which is required by the state of Maine DOE. So, 
NTSS interventionists play a crucial role in supporting students' academic behavior and social-emotional growth within an educational setting. These roles focus on implementing interventions tailored to meet the needs of our diverse students, ensuring equitable access to education and fostering a supportive learning environment. The third position, uh, we're calling a differentiation specialist, and their primary responsibility is going to be to design and implement strategies that cater to the diverse needs of learners within an educational setting. They'll work closely with teachers, administrators, and other educational stakeholders to ensure that instruction is adapted and personalized to meet the unique requirements of each student. So all three of these positions are student-facing, meaning that they're going to be working directly with students and teachers to reach these goals. So it's not like an administrative type role. These are people who are going to be working directly with students and teachers. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we've really thought about is how we can create continuity with the work that's happening K-5 as well as 8-12 at Noble High School and be, um, you know, middle school is obviously that middle of the road melting pot, but we want to make sure that the continuity goes K-12 and is not bumpy at 6-7. Can I ask you a question? Please. So let, let's take a, just the situation, because I think a lot of the concerns are just around bullying. Yeah. So if these are great, they, they look very academic based, but I'm assuming I'm missing something here. So if you have a student who feels like they're being bullied, and you've got the potential bully in the picture, how do these interventionists address that? Other than academically. I get that keeping students engaged appropriately is helpful. But having had a student who felt bullied, um, how would this impact that? Great question. So MTSS, the two MTSS interventionists, those folks are going to be doing the academic and behavioral side, which is really key. So uh, one thing that I have noticed in, in years, but specifically this year, is that it's actually not like one or two or 50 bullies. Uh, really, just about any person walks in can say something pretty mean to anybody. It's part of kind of figuring things out. And so really what we need to be having conversations with kids about and, and structure and instruction, uh, that restorative work, we need somebody who can facilitate that, who can um, engage with the classroom teachers because they are huge, they're huge stakeholders in this process. And so, and families, you know, be able to um, create plans for kids and could be an entire lunch table, maybe, that's having some issues and a little back and forth. And we're already we're dealing with a lot of those things, right? We have excellent school counselors, um, excellent staff, but this is going to be just that, that next level of really coaching up uh, staff members, but also having somebody who's able to work through processes and protocols with kids um, as they're going through the struggle. So it's not all academic. A lot of what we're looking at is supporting those exact situations that you're talking about. Great. So what would be the profile of the people you would hire here? Do they have a psychology background or educational? Or what, what do you look for when you're looking for these positions? So ideally, we're going to have uh, like highly skilled um, veteran background in these situations. That's we're looking for someone who's been there, been like on, on sort of that ground floor, worked through these situations in several sort of um, like experiences, I guess. But I, we're going to put it out and, and hope that we get a diverse group of applicants to come and, and take a look. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for somebody with a lot of experience doing these things and uh, ideally master's level. What I, that's, that's what I would hope for. So with these people, so I know when teachers like have an issue with students and they're trying to break up in the class, they'll send them out. And a lot of what I hear is they come back and the same thing. And they're trying to teach a class. And they, so would this provide support at that level? Like if, if a student is having an issue, so I mean the office isn't always, I mean I've had people tell me they like it because they get snacks. <laughs> like my kid likes to go to the office, so he doesn't care about it as a punishment. So does this provide a level to take care of that so that yeah so ideally we don't like our punishments are are significantly less right like the goal is to get less referrals because teachers have skills that they're using in the classroom kids have skills that they are learning and being able to apply in the classroom so 
we have this, uh, I think, two two prong system where we, with improvement or with with training on both of those fronts, I think that we're gonna we're gonna be able to take a big chunk out of this. Ideally, kids are not coming to the office regularly. Right, right. There will always be kids who need that, right. but I think that where where we are right now is not where we need to be. Awesome. Thank so you. Would this be one on one type of? Or would it be more of a group setting, class setting? Yeah, so I, you know, I think about <coughs> the variety of uh, needs of kids. So there's just, um, it could be the really shy kid who just has that, like, anxiousness being in the class. Like, not necessarily a big problem, but not successful from a social perspective that way. And so maybe there are groups, and maybe, you know, through restorative uh, justice, you need groups of kids, you need people. So this is somebody. Uh, or, or people um, that we're going to use, we're going to use the supports and, and staff members that we currently have um, just to get on the team, help, uh, I think, fill in some holes that we have and, and go. So I, I don't want to say, I think that as a district, we don't do a whole lot of one on one. I don't think that we get a, a, a big bang for the buck there, but I um, certainly there, there are short bursts of time and chunks of time that that's helpful. and. I think it's really important to take a look at the data on these situations. So, like, if whatever we're whatever we're seeing, when when somebody is is doing like providing an intervention, creating an intervention plan for a student, it's really important to keep an eye on the data. Is the data improving based on what we're doing, or do we need to try something different? And staff as well, is it going to be like they're going to work with teachers in the classroom, or will it be more like? Groups of teachers, trying to be loud, <laughs> groups of teachers, or a combination of? So I, I think that how Noble Middle School is structured with teams, I think it makes sense to do some team level, tier one intervention. So that classroom, how you're, how you're working with a student who might be struggling um, at that level. And then if there are specific potential combinations of students and teachers, an individual teacher that's having a struggle there, and that's that's part of the principal assistant principal job as well, right? Like we're that's what we need to be doing as well. And so uh, I think that it adds a layer. It adds more, um, I would say, consistent ability to be right there, jump in, do some coaching, and saying, "Hey, here, here's what happened, and now now here's what here's some things that I saw, or here, you know." So I, uh, it's it's definitely going to be working with individual teachers as well as whole teams or, or groups or departments or things like that. Mike, I got two questions. Um, just referencing goal number one, um, talk about cultivating a positive inclusion to <coughs> by enhancing, um, and I think enhancing is a key word there, multi-tier proactive systems and programs that effectively manage and address um, challenging behaviors. So can you differentiate between the, the systems you have now um, with multi-tier proactive systems and programs, can you differentiate that from what exists now to what will exist in September of 2024. Sure. So uh, from academically, um, what happens with NTSS is we have labs. So we have two literacy labs and one math, one math lab. And so how it looks is that those labs are are enrolled into based on test scores um, and sometimes in other things too, but I would say primarily test scores. And uh, because we run a, an AB schedule for, for globals, and so one of those globals gets taken by a lab. And so um, that's going to change next year so that even students who might be struggling academically should still be able to have two globals. I think that's a, a core philosophy. Um, so we will, there is, there is an opportunity with Squire time. There's also opportunities um, working, collaborating with teams to um, find opportunities to either push in or pull small groups of students out to do sort of those targeted interventions similar to what happens in elementary schools right now. Um, so that would be the plan academically. Right now, we have uh, a sixth grade program where there's a, a teacher in ed tech who work primarily with sixth graders. Um, in the past, they have had a homeroom where they have had sort of a list of of uh, or a roster of students who needed some more support, and they would run it that way and, and sort of be a home base, but also go support those students in classrooms. 
and also uh, something similar in seventh grade with, with a specific teacher. So um, I think that there's, there's a, some leverage there in that model of having a room and having a place where people can sort of uh, go to when they need a different, uh, a different setting for short, short amounts of time or potentially scheduled amounts of time. Um, but I, I do, I've seen some success at the elementary level and certainly at the high school level where um, you, this, someone creates a plan with a student, involves uh, parents that think about a little, little multiple pathways-ish as far as how, um, how closely you work with individual students, support them, figure out what they need, um, and get them back into that academic setting. So I don't know if that answers your question. Somewhat, right? I think I think you know there's there's the I, there's the ideas, um, and I think the implement the implementation is going to be going to be an issue. And I think you know to to what um, Wheeler was saying, you know, we are aware of situations where where teachers can't teach. So you now students need a place to go. You know, okay, right? But if they're sent back to a classroom, they for a short period of time, they come back to the classroom, the same issues are, are arising. That's the kind of problems we're talking about. Because if students can't learn, right? If, if one student's in there, and I, and I have a personal experience with it's my own daughter who lost a year of, of second grade, I'd be honest, lost a year because of behaviors of, of one particular student in the class. And I understand school systems trying to make it work for everybody, but when, when the cost is a student who's just following all the rules and doing all the expectations isn't able to learn, that's not a good, that's not a good situation. That's not a win, right? I think it's really important for you to keep in mind as you're developing this that there are, you know, I, I don't know what the percentage is, but usually it's around 90% of students are doing exactly what every parent wants them to do and every teacher wants them to do and every administrator wants them to do, right? And if we just go off that, saying 90% of the kids are doing it, and we got to make sure that 10% don't take away the 90% chance to learn, right? And, yeah. and so if, if that's what you're talking about as far as um, creating a positive and inclusive culture to do that, then I look forward to seeing the, those those results over the course of next year as to how much more time are we, are we able to teach. The other thing I'm talking about goal two, so I'll leave goal one there um, for now. Goal two is it the way that I'm, I'm reading it, and, and I need you to kind of um, explain it so that it doesn't feel this way, is that you feel that some, at least to some extent, some of the behaviors that you've seen are because of ineffective instructional, ineffective instruction. Because that's the way I'm reading it, right? We want to enhance instructional effectiveness, and this is to address the the behaviors going on in the, in the, in the school, right? This was our discussion um, when we last met. Um, so it, it, that's the way I'm reading. I'm reading that you feel that there's there's ineffective instruction happening, and that's actually contributing to student misbehavior. Am I incorrect in that um, reading? Uh, it's okay. Yeah, I think I think that we have some air, we have some places. To we work. have room to grow, and that's right? fair. Right? That's the, that's Honesty is what we're we try we try to be transparent, right? Well, and honest yeah, and, 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 uh, and to own it, right? It's not everything's not perfect. Yep. Well, and, and this just not to, but the reality is is that we have new staff who might not have the experience necessary yes. to handle some of the more difficult situations that are happening. Yeah. We need to provide them with more direct instruction, basically, to help them with their own instruction. I mean, that's that's just the reality, and that's not only. At Noble Middle School, that's right. really in any system because the 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 prep that's coming, no fault to the colleges, but they don't have the they don't they don't have every scenario that walks in the door, and there's a lot of interesting scenarios that walk in our doors every day. Yeah. So well, I think it's important. I think part of the issue is what you're saying. If you have a child or more than one in a classroom that's challenging, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to teach effectively. Yeah. Teaching is hard, period. I think it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I think, and that's what I think we're trying to do, is to help those teachers maybe give them space to develop their skills. But also that's for important. me, I think it's super important to me, having had two children that experience bullying, that somebody, I get those kids who are bullying need some help with social emotional behavior. That's super important to me. But it's also important to me that somebody checks in with those yeah. kids who work and make sure they're returning to a position where they feel safe at school and want to be there. I mean, I pulled my daughter out of middle school for a little while because she didn't. And, and it wasn't because of any, I just feel like, it felt at the time like, and when I talked to teachers, it just wasn't enough space in the day. 
it just was too much they already had on their plates to be committed to supporting all those things. It's not their fault. So, so this, I, I'd like to try to respond to some of the things. That was a lot. I'm to, <laughs> so I, I want to say that uh, quickly that it is not uh, the norm. I would say uh, we do not send kids back to the same period if a student is asked to leave. So I will, if that's happened, I bet you that it has not happened. Um, there's not been an administrator who has sent a student back to class after the same class after they have been removed from class. It has not happened. And so that does not mean that a student has not shown back up in the same class, but it has not been a conscious decision that that's happened. And so I'll own that, but I want everyone here to know and publicly that that is not part of my practice. Um, Part of that comes with um, the way our schedule works is that if a student is sent out of class and then 20 minutes into the next class and it was a disruption that the student uh, was blurting, so not something that is like incredibly, you know, it's, it's not traumatizing, it's not something that is like my job. So someone gets removed from the class because they're being disruptive in class for whatever the reason is. If, if it's not flagrant, then I'm going to get them back into their schedule. That is, that's really important to do. Um, and I think a lot, of the, a lot of the scenarios that I see, most students can get back into their schedule. They have not done something flagrant enough where they need to be removed. Some students have, and they are removed and they do not go back. And some students I have parents on the way and uh, we meet and we, we solve that problem and we do re-entry meetings and things like that. So that is not happening. What may happen, here's something that's interesting. If a student has science class, they get removed from science class. That science class is their homeroom. Science class ends, we move on to homeroom. The student's back in their schedule. So it might feel like they're going back to that teacher right after they got removed. But those are, those are situations where science class is now over, or a squire time, or something like that. So there are scenarios where a student may be back to back with a teacher who had a, had a situation with them, but it's not typical. Or two students just have the next class together. So the same thing could happen. Right, and so that's something that we're looking at as well. And so I uh, still need to do some work on what the schedule looks like um, and the student groupings look like. And so I don't want to necessarily say that at the school board meeting, it's a little early still. Um, but I, it's something that we're thinking about actively and uh, I'm going to work with the leadership team on to, I, I think, structure, structure, structure. And when you have that, and it sounds it's pretty conservative, but if you, I think that, Students do well with structure, and I think any classroom, any classroom teacher would tell you that, routines and structure, knowing what's coming next, predictability, I think that that's important. Awesome. Yeah, I think the, the other thing I'd add is, is just to make sure that, um, it, or I would suggest, I'm not saying make sure, but suggest um, that students have to earn their right to return to their instructional program. Um, I think I understand if they've been removed, being, being removed, being asked to say, I can't teach while you're in the room is a significant error on the part of a student. May not be suspendable, I agree, right? But if a teacher says, I can't teach, or students can't learn while you're in this room, that's, that's, that's a pretty big deal, right? Um, I, I refuse to believe that teachers just, you know, very flippant send students out of their room. I don't, I don't believe that's the case, right? So if that's the case, then I think students have to work really hard to earn the right to return their, to their instructional program. Maybe that's a three page paper, handwritten. They have to say, I will. And it's something that they actually have to do. And if it takes them two to three periods to get it done, then so be it. But that's the work that they know. If, I'm, if I get removed to this room, I have a big problem that I'm gonna have to sort out. And it might take a long time. So if you can just think of, of that, you know, how do they, it, they got to realize that being in that, in that classroom, I would love all of our students in that SAD 60 to understand that being in the classroom with our teachers here is a privilege. It is a privilege. And, and let's make sure that the students know it's a privilege. And if they get asked to be, if they can't be there, they got paid the piper somehow, some way to get back in. Right? Um, so that's what I, what I encourage. Um, what's your best luck? You mentioned it's a three year plan and you're in the middle of it, you're, you're, you're in it. Is, so is, is year one this year and there's two more years to this plan? or like uh, year one starts next year. <laughs> okay. We can we can call this half of a year if you want to do that. We can go half of a year now, and um, I definitely am looking forward to uh, to to 
coming back next year to coordinate and, and show them some data. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Please do. And this is short, but this this is awesome, except for me, it doesn't speak to the issue that reflects why I think most of us wanted this money put back in the budget, which is work out. And, and just from a taxpayer point of view, if we're saying we want this put back in to address some of the bullying issues, I sort of want to refer to behavior how it's going. This really, to me, when I read it, I thought, oh, this looks all academic. If you look at the second part of the multi-tiered systems of support for yeah. interventionists, the second one does speak more to behavior <coughs> intervention plans Functional behavioral assessments, um, I guess so. strategies I, to promote positive student behavior. Yeah. So I okay. I just want to make that yes. super clear yes. that that yes. is really the primary motivation for doing this. I know test scores are important, but I we're we're talking. Yes, yes, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, equally important. Yeah. Yeah. I just have two questions for you. Um, one is something in the class already, you just couldn't see. Um, but I want to, want to know how are they going to interact with incorporating family and community engagement? How, how do you see that? Uh, I definitely think that my experience is when, every time I call home, parents are almost every time like looking to be engaged, looking to help the school work with their kids, um, get in, talk to the teachers, figure out what they can do to solve. So I think that having an extra layer of that um, communicating with what kid, what we're doing, um, I think that teachers are doing that now, but it's just an extra layer of getting getting families, understanding what, um, what the expectations are in school, what we're learning in school um, around those things, as well as like what your specific child, like how, what are the strategies that are working at home? What are the strategies that are working or not working at school? How can we, um, I think just more uh, a direct line or a more um, robust communication with home for, for specific mm -hmm. students. Okay, and how do you do that? This is kind of how I second question, like I said, something may have already asked something around it. As we're talking about, um, say, a bullying issue, there's, there's the person who was bullied and the bully. It's not a group of them. How are we going to look at the total population of the school? Because every time there's a situation like that, every time there's a situation that happens in school, it doesn't matter what it is, we're, we're, the whole school is affected, really. In, in a lot of ways. Sometimes it's a classroom, but really the whole school population is affected. How, how do you see them looking at that? Not just the two or the three or whatever happened. I mean, it, it, you watch something happen in the hallway, it was a bullying incident, physical or not, it's still gonna affect everybody in the hallway. Their day is not gonna be the same as it was before it happened. So I'm just wondering how is this going to affect that type of thing? Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. So uh, there are some things that we have, we've, uh, I would say, put in the first iteration or seen several iterations. One of, one of them would be uh, myself and another, the art teacher, Rebecca Holland, were doing student ambassadors and seeing sort of like a couple, a couple sort of descriptions on what that group of students does, but a lot of it is just positive um, student to student, hallway, stairway, bathroom, um, modeling type behavior. Um, then, you know, just things like that where we're talking to kids about how they actually have the voice. What's great about middle school is an incredible sense of justice, right? Like, uh, middle schoolers are in this really sweet spot where they see justice and they're not jaded yet. Um, and so, like, we can capitalize on that. And so, the, I think the idea would be to have these, indivi these new individuals, but also our current team, spending more time working with small groups of kids, whether it's lunch groups during lunch, whether it's uh, recess group or squire times, to create a positive engagement at school where kids see themselves um, having some momentum, having some direction, um, having a voice. And, and I think that's really important for all grades, but certainly in middle school. Um, that, and it's a huge, huge uh, conversation about this, but I, I think that all of our students, we really need to make sure that uh, our school has a very 
specific, or not specific, but really concrete identity and who we are, who Noble Squires are, who Noble is as a community. And it starts obviously in elementary school, but this is where all, all towns are together. Uh, kids have this, they have the ability to take action where in elementary school is just different. Um, they can do it. And so I think that we need to provide air for them to do that and some coaching and some modeling and really the kids can do it. I love what you just said because I think you nailed it and I've never really thought about it before. They come with a sense of confidence and justice and they either keep that or lose it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, I, and what Tori said is true too. It's If they see it happening, it's upsetting to some kids to think, wow, I just saw that and nobody's fixing this. Or that poor kid who it happened to is still feeling hurt by it. And I, kids in classrooms where one kid's bullying another and the teacher's too busy to see it, but they see it. And I've had a child in that situation who ends up in the office with the bully saying you were part of the problem when the kids really... So yeah, just having the extra resources, I hope really gives the opportunity to do that. The other thing I said when I'm done, mentors. Do you, did, are mentors ever used? We do. Yep. So we have okay. uh, we have adult mentors in our school. We have a few adult mentors in the community, and also Noble High School has been sending uh, high school students to Noble Middle School. It's uh, it's awesome to watch uh, the teenagers have have a middle schooler, and I see them walking around. I see them outside and out in the yard, and, and just spending time sitting sitting down, just chit chatting, but um, doing a ton of things, and that. Yeah. Not just the amount of the community forum that we yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so there really is so there really is some great stuff That's happening. Awesome. It really truly is. It's at nine to ten. And uh, you know, some days some days it's a little better than that, some days it's a little bit worse. But you know, I think that we're heading in the right direction. This it's been a, it's been tough this year. And I think it's it's certainly not uh to a bird burke and Lebanon who have, you know, these these only these situations. Every, oh, no. Everyone I've talked to. Yeah, it's everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. everywhere. Yep. It's everywhere. It's a banner year yeah. across everyone I've talked yeah. to. So. Yeah. yeah, so when you use the mentors, do you use them for the kids who are struggling social emotionally or do you use them also for the kids? Because I'm thinking if you can identify kids who are feeling bullied and find them a mentor who's been through that, oh, that would be huge. We definitely do that. Awesome. That's excellent. Yep. So, it, yeah, there's, there's a, a variety of reasons that people are matched up. There's a lot of thought that goes into it, and it's really, it's very cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll continue with the adoption process. Denise um, did her magic, and um, so you have a new packet of materials and they are the tabs, but they're not every tab. They're tabs that have had some shifts and changes. I don't know if you want to take a moment to just put them in your notebooks, or if you want to just move ahead and talk about the revenue, the um, tab 22, because that's really the page that has some of those really big shifts on them. So why don't we um, go, like that. go to, okay, we'll go to tab 22. The new tab <laughs> so I two of you guys got clipped ones. Like completely clipped. I think I really put the toy. The rest of you just have to pull pull pull. pull. They're a numerical award. They're a numerical award. Yes. We were really that. <laughs> um, and the one tab that is missing is the fun events tab. I literally, we were, this was coming off the cough beer as you guys were starting. <laughs> I can get that to you. But, all right, so are we on to have, is everybody at tab 22? Let's see. Okay, let's see. So last uh, board meeting, we discussed um, all the proposals out there for um, different, different um, items to take out of the, the budget. Um, landed on 7.77%. And so today, we're going to talk through that. If you look at the revenue page, tab 22, it is currently right now, if you look at the bottom, um, it is 7.48%. So we will go through some of those shifts that have occurred, um, and then we'll talk further about that before um, 
moving on to the other two school nutrition and adult education. So we did find out this week that our medical came in higher than we thought. So we had budgeted 7%. It came in at 8.268%. Uh, so we needed to reflect that and adjust that in throughout every piece where we had staff. We had to pull all that, uh, all that shift. Um, that was sixty-five thousand dollars more than what we were, ex more than what we had hoped. Uh, we were cautious, but we knew that that could happen. Um, we did recalculate the MHA tuition, so right now it's thirty-three thousand one hundred fifteen, and it's going up um, to forty thousand nine hundred forty-two. So that gives us some of, of that increase there, and we've also. In talking with Josie, who's the director, Josie Chadbourne of MHA, she um, is expecting one more tuition student in next year as well. So that is um, on the positive for us. Uh, one thing that you will note as you look through some of these tabs more specifically, we did add 24000 in for tables for um, the lunch periods at Noble Middle School. And given some of the changes that um, Principal Archambault wants to work through, uh, we added that in. That is certainly something you know that you can discuss. And I don't know if you want to speak very quickly to that. I know you just <laughs> call you up again. <laughs> yep. Uh, so right now, we currently have about 18, lunch, 18 cafeteria tables in our cafeteria. Um, we run two lunches per grade, so four total lunches, um, about 25 minutes per lunch. Uh, looking to next year, uh, I would like to get all the grade eating lunch together um, and then having a recess together as well. And so uh, for, that, for that social time, for that free, um, there's a lot of structure in some parts of the day, but also some time where kids get to go be kids and have some ability to do that so it's a work in progress but uh, in order to do that and make it so that not every seat sometimes there needs to be a seat or two at a table that's not taken just based on the, the chemistry of some students um, we need about 10 more tables and the tables are wicked expensive they don't you wouldn't expect it by looking at them but they're about 2400 bucks a piece and they're eight seats per table and we have the space to put them in the cafeteria the space is there we just need the tables And then looking at the kilowatt hours for electricity, um, we put in $60,000 worth of savings for that. And as you go up, looking at the top, you'll see that we have the high cost of out-of-district placements. We put in at $320,000. And the fund balance, that fund balance, 693,110. That was the original, from your original version, plus that efficiency main um, money that will be in the fund balance when we start on July 1st. So that was uh, money that we've talked about previously. And then the next additional usage fund balance. Yep, that's the same as it was. And the sports activity fee we put in at thirty thousand, uh, just to reflect a little bit more. As as we were talking earlier, we're still com we're coming out of COVID, so just um, this is a more accurate reflection of, of what is happening for that. So it's not increasing the fees; it's just increasing participation. Right. Yeah. The main care revenue of a hundred thousand that we discussed starting next year. And picking up because we had done it in the past just picking it back up and then the miscellaneous revenue is at 67.825 and so that one again it was 30,000 in the first draft and then we added that money from the Tritown bookmobile that has that was in a previous budget that's been sitting and we're going to bring that back into the budget and then the MHA tuition student tuition and that shows the increase in the tuition there. And bank interest of 120,000. And then the 9,000 for National Board of Certification Salary Supplement for the teachers that have been um, National Board Certified.
So then you see the projected increase, increase in local taxes is the 7.151. And as you follow it down, it goes to 7.4825. Any particular questions or conversations? I wrote something about the special because I saw the clerk that um, petitions and ahead of time, so it really gave me some time to reflect. I think the one you read, that was a pass out. Each of us had over, I want to say, 200 signatures last I saw. It was um, two weeks long ago. Right. <laughs> um, so, I, I don't know why. Um, we talk about social and emotional needs changing and that half of what these specialists provide to these kiddos at um, through their adolescent programs. One could argue that they're saving money by not hiring additional staff to support these evolving needs and that current staff has already stepped up to put these outreach programs into place to support the students and their teachers in classrooms. And then I don't need to really talk about like, my specific kids, but we're doing it tonight, so <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, I honestly see these programs so similar to what Mr. A was sharing when he put in these plates. Like, they're already doing these outreach programs for these kids who need it. Like, my kiddo is targeted as too harsh of a word. Um, but he's a kiddo who, you know, I don't even want to say bullied. Sometimes that, like, he's just a good kid. He's a good kid and just an easy, easy one to pick on. I'll say pick on. Um, and so these clubs and things have been made in these schools to support these kids and, like, have them excited. Like, the library teacher was telling my mom that she, like when they, she says to the kids for a history club, they have to go back to class. Like, you should see how upset they are that they have to leave like, the club in the library about history, third grade. It's like, so I just really, really want to consider like work. In my mind and opinion and from what I see as a parent, we are asking to take away in the elementary school what we're asking to be implemented in the middle school. And I just really struggle with that and would love that. I get it. I just I think it's tough because it isn't something that's offered in any other two towns. So that makes it <coughs> really difficult. I mean, the one did have a really good point though. Like what? There, the amount of students they now see to compare to the other schools. Like what does that actually look like? And I think equity is a really hard thing to talk about because we also have like really small programs for you know kids with special needs. Um, you know, so like equity is a fun word, but I don't know that it's the most appropriate word. So I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm going to put my two cents in. Lebanon has none of that. Is that fair? I mean, maybe we should look what we can do in Lebanon. I mean, yeah. And I think that would have to be the conversation for me. Because yeah. if it's yeah. working so well there, we're going to leave that money in. We would really have to look at the other two schools and figure out how we could offer that. I, I was going to ask Sue or Audrey if you can address some of the points in here. like. If that is your reasoning, please consider that if you consolidate, some of these teachers will be asked to teach 476 students each week, which they believe is more students than K-12 specialists in the district, in higher district. Is that tricky? Between Hanson and Lebanon Elementary, there's 403 students. So at the elementary level, um, that is, if we consolidate, that is, um, they will be higher than that um, so at, for the, the Milton staff and the North Brook Elementary staff would be at 473. So they would be higher than the 403 that's currently in Lebanon. Mr. Forte, I apologize, but the board doesn't actually take during their session. There's public input afterwards, though, if you want to put it in. I don't, I don't want you to feel like we're being completely ignoring you. Just let you know. Um, and again, that's a pro like approximately 2.5 students per class. So are we adding the, would you say you're adding in the Milton School to North Berwick and Berwick? Because Lebanon has their own technical Milton School. That's why there's more kids. So I'm just questioning. So what I said, I, maybe, maybe I didn't that's, answer that's it right. I'm just Maybe I didn't answer you cor yeah, correctly. Yeah. So North Berwick Elementary School in Milton, if they mm -hmm. consolidate, it's 473 students. 473. Right now, Lebanon has the highest, between Lebanon Elementary and Hanson, they have 403 students. And that's 
currently the highest. So if we consolidate, there is that much more between Milton and North Berwick. They, so they do the same? They do the same? They would be 70, it would be 70 for the rate higher, about 700 oh, higher. Okay, so yes. Yes. <coughs> Which averages out to about 2.5 per class that they would receive. <coughs> adding in an additional grade system, right? Like when you think of like how many kids are in a grade. Yeah, yeah, depends on which school. school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like actually on average that's probably a similar maybe, I don't know. But I mean that's so just just to make sure I understand this is just popping in my head. For Lebanon Elementary at Hanson, there would be one gym teacher, one and yes. Yes. Okay. And the same at Hussey. And the same at Hussey. Yes. Hussey being one school with grades K through six. K through six. Yes. Over in Lebanon, we would have K through fifth. Yes. Over at North Berwick. Yeah. North Berwick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Over at North Berwick, it's K through four. Yes. And then for fifth grade. Are the, the Berwick, 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 and North Berwick. Yes. And plus four grades of Berwick. Okay, so that's why you add. So, so you add Hussey. Hussey would stand, stand alone. And Lebanon Elementary and Hanson would stand alone. Like they would not be changed. Those two schools are. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, currently. Yeah. I have it right here. I do. Okay. So currently there in North Berwick, there are 15 sections total. Knowlton has 12 sections. Hanson has 16, Lebanon Elementary has seven, Hussey has 20 sections. Um, Hanson and Lebanon and Hussey also have self-contained programs, so the yes. specialists work with those students in a different group. So Hussey projected next year, Hussey sections would be 24 to 25 and even 26. We have 17 students from Child Development Services, for Hussey. If all of those students need some contained programming, which many of them will, that could make that section 25, up to 25 or 26 sections. There would be 27 sections if you consolidate North Berwick and Moulton. So Hussey would be comparable in number of sections to North Berwick and Moulton. Hanson would be at 23, and again, based on their CDS numbers, they could go up to having to another section um, based on any life skills or self-contained students. So we're talking 24 to 27 sections. That's the range. That is the range. So so North Berwick Elementary mm -hmm. and Milton School share the same special teacher? Currently, they, right. currently they do not. So there's currently they do not. They do no, not. This is the yes. consolidation. But they would consolidate about. those two. Yes. yes. Those yes. two schools. Okay. Yes. So then there would be one PE teacher for North Berwick so and Milton. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. what it was. Yeah. I just sure. Sure. No, the absolutely. Because I just said, sure. yeah. wait a minute, what? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you say the number for Knowlton again? The section. Sure. Knowlton has twelve. Oh, wow. oh. Okay. And I also just want to um, just restate the fact that we do have intramural money in the that all schools, all elementary schools, all K twelve schools have, but some of the clubs and programs can run and have run after school hours. And I know that that's a different conversation, but we do have money in the budget to allow for some of that to happen as well, as you're thinking about, um, you know, just to the point of the students are really enjoying the history club or something like that. So there is, there are funds available for that. How likely is it that somebody can take that on, that a teacher can take that on, if they're offered? They've done it in the past. Oh, um, Electives, I think is what they were called, after school electives or something right. like that. They've done that before. So all different kinds of things they were offering. Right. Yeah, I know that. But yeah. but so there it's really dependent upon yeah. 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 interest yeah. levels of folks being interested mm -hmm. in it, you know, not wanting to do it. 
And the, the teachers don't get that stipend, do they? Is that just the cost of the program, or does the no, teacher they get the stipend? stipend. They get the stipend. <laughs> After school, I tend to go to school. Yeah. And and we're all there. Well, um, can you think? I mean, Hussey, has, you know, Hussey has like a math club that yeah. runs periodically, and then we've got a um, a robotics that is coming from out from the shipyard come, that comes into the school. So, mm -hmm. like that will happen. You know, ebbs, it ebbs and flows. So it's like a six week chunk, and then it stops, and then there's a six week chunk. And what we have knitting. Um, I think it tries, we try to do it in each school. Each school? Yes. I think Huzzy just ended it up and I think yeah. Milton, yeah. Okay. And then there's knitting. Yeah. That gets a lot of um, traction. <laughs> <laughs> um, some theater, some drama. Yeah. Yeah. So it varies. So it would be on the same model as what we do in the summer. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Denise, sorry, could you, um, for purposes for the board, could you, if if that one ninety, could you let us know what that would do to the percentage? Thank you. I think it was in the final analysis. It was closer to one ninety five, so I'm going to put that in. It raises school expenditures. From 8.32% increase to 8.75, that's at the very top. And it, <coughs> the bottom line, 7.48% increase and makes it 8.33. I hate to ask you this. If it's automated, great. If not, I don't want you to figure it out. But what would that mean for thousands? A hundred thousand? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, she's slow. Um, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I'm literally trying to run the top of my notebook so I can see that number too. <laughs> it's um, so at the seven point. Let me just double check this. At seven point four eight increase, which is what you have before you, uh, it was. Again, disclaimers because mm -hmm. this doesn't actually appear on your tax bill. Totally yeah. My town, but approximate for Berwick, seventy-eight point seventy-four, Lebanon seventy-eight point thirty-seven, and North Berwick fifty-two point sixty-nine. If we were to add this money, that brings it Berwick to eighty-seven point seventy-one, Lebanon to eighty-six point eighty-two. And North Berwick to fifty nine point fifteen. Thanks. Wilson had ours for hundred thousand for Hustle. If I'm hearing the board correctly, if we're if we're considering adding this in, can we recognize that Lebanon and Berwick do not have these opportunities? What would be the cost of adding this same level of support and opportunity at Lebanon and Berwick? I think we actually need to consider that number because this, to me, these are not so. This is the same issue. I agree. So I don't think it's an increase of you know the whatever. I, I think you have to. I mean, and, uh, double, triple it. I mean, the number of students in North Berwick is much less than the students in Berwick and Lebanon. What, I mean, we're talking, we're talking a significant addition. I mean, I don't know what it is, but numbers wise, it, proportionally, we're talking a significant addition. Mm -hmm. And the, to go with that, too, is the need there for those schools as well? Like, of course, everyone can use all, all the resources we can so, get and all the hands. I'm just going to put this out there, like, please don't. Yeah. Um, the reason that we were looking at this was specifically based on the, the actual um, number of sections that each of our specials are teaching and the very, very different piece that our Lebanon and Berwick folks are doing versus what North Berwick and the folks is doing. So I really, I, it's a hard thing, it's a wicked hard 
piece for us, but I really think we need to look at it in terms of that, in terms of what we're doing and trying to, because I don't know that we can uh, implement the same thing in the other two parts, the way that, I mean, I'm totally proud of the specialists who have taken that extra time and done some great things with it, but it isn't actually, it isn't the same as what they're, what we ask them to do. So it's just, it's a hard one. Part of my really hard. concern with this too, is this potentially a, con a contractual issue? I mean, could somebody file a complaint saying, uh, they could, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so you couldn't actually do this. You couldn't intentionally hire somebody and say, your job won't meet the requirements of your contract. You're going to do this other thing. And if you want to take on other things, you can. Um, I mean, Let's I don't say, think, I, I, so I mean, I think it's a, it's a double, it's a bit of a slide there, but the reality, I think that, um, I hate to say this, but like classroom, regular classroom teachers would definitely be looking at, at the, at the level of responsibilities and saying, this isn't feel, it doesn't feel equitable right now. Yeah, we, we have to get information from our, we did get information from our teachers yeah. union about yeah. it as well. So it's it's just really hard because this is all good stuff for kids. That's oh, and there's nothing here that isn't that anybody feels good about. It's just how do we make this all balanced? Um, that's the hard part. Hypothetically speaking, mm -hmm. if somebody in that position left one of those positions mm -hmm. as it is now, mm -hmm. and somebody else came in, mm -hmm. could you dictate to them that here's what your job is now? that you must do all these other extra things because you don't have regular sections? Um, so, uh, from a fiscal responsibility, I would look at it, and if somebody left right now, I would be looking at a part-time position. Right. To fill the role that needed to be filled in terms of this, of these sections. Right. So that's, that's what I would be looking at. Right. Um, you know, as we're trying to Steward this really hard to this difficult budget. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, unless there are other we have other discussion. Any other discussion on any of the other any other questions on that um, tab 22 that we talked about that we just talked about before um, looking further at adoption? Knowing that we act as one once we decide something, is it possible or is this completely out of like I want to support the budget? I might not support this thing. Mm -hmm. Can we do a straw poll on this one thing, and then whatever that decision is, to use that to support the budget? Does that make sense? Straw uh, polls are not binding. Yeah. Right, but at least yeah. the general consensus of this seven one, like then I can say okay, that's fine, and I will support the budget. But so you're saying so we straw poll just for the special yeah, yeah, to add that in. So again, because it's changed, right? Best two out of three. <laughs> so are you saying a thumbs up if we want to reinstate or it's an up well, it's not it's in it now, so we not consolidate. Yeah. Is that what you're proposing? Not consolidate. No. So not consolidate specialists. That would be because right now what we're looking at is it is consolidated. Right. So yeah. we're yeah. taking yeah. a yeah. vote to remove the consolidation. From the budget. Yeah. And, and other words, alter the budget. Oh, yeah. And alter the budget. 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 Alter the budget that we have in front of us that we came up with last time and alter it to now include non consolidation. Right? So just to be clear, from a Berwick perspective, it's going to increase Berwick more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And actually, North Berwick feels it the least. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So just, I'm not looking yeah. at it. So I just, as I just want to point that out because if you're, that that's 
for one item, it's kind of that's what it is. It's easier just to because right now I don't. I'll be honest. I don't love not including it, but if I'm the minority or whoever of us feels like are the minority, then I can say okay, that's fine, and then I can vote in favor of this budget. Is it easier to, to word it as we're going to keep it the way it is, vote in favor of keeping the way the budget is? Is that easier to sort of? Wrap your heads around to keep the consolidation in the budget. Keep the con consolidation in the budget. Is that an easier way to look at it? you want to say that? <laughs> just make sure everybody knows. Yeah. Keep asking questions. So, so, yeah. so, uh, so a thumbs up is we're going to keep what we already have, which is keeping the consolidation in the, in the budget. Okay. Are we ready for that, Sarah Paul? Yes. Uh, so raise your hand. Are we keeping the budget the way it is? Nothing else to discuss okay. with the budget. It needs the approval, so it's the the adoption of the fiscal twenty five district budget. So we want somebody to make a motion. Well, we make the motion. motion. And is there a regular any language we have to just go through? Motion to adopt. Okay. Second motion. Okay. We have uh, the board adopt the budget here. We have to vote for it. We just have to pull it up, the language up. Oh, oh I, that's what I thought. Okay. general budget approves a dollar amount. Um, a delta ed approves the budget and the local share, and then the school nutrition is just uh, local share. So I know what's the college the word for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I just, I just oh, yeah. Back to my yep, so it's, I think it was the end of March. Yeah. Want me to read it? Yeah. And then you can approve. Yes. Please. So, um, let me have this so I have both. So what happens when the power goes up for three days? 
Member for me to make the motion uh, to approve the FY25 school budget of $49,1,797 and the local share of $24,430,560. Can I just say so moved? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, officially, I, I, mo I move that we um, approve the FY25 proposed budget uh, $49,1,797 with a local share of $24,430,560. Thank you. Do I second? All in favor? to approve the FY25 adult education budget of $293,981 with a local share of $90,265. So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this next one is a little different. Um, this is, uh, we'll need a board member to approve the FY25 school nutrition program budget with a local share of $0. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> Second. Right, second. All in favor? same resources as North Berwick, we are now punishing the teachers and the students of North Berwick for a sum that is a single digit sum for the taxpayers. That's what you just decided to do. There were no good reasons given for it, and I'm registering a complaint of the over 70 people who signed my petition, and I'm sure others in this room as well. For our house in Burlick, that would be a three hundred thousand dollar house, which there aren't any of. That would be thirty, at least thirty bucks compared to a an eighty bucket hundred increase already. So you'd be increasing it fifty percent fold on every hundred thousand. So I'm not, I'm not sure what that. Right, well, I just wanted to make that point because I'm not getting it. If it was five dollars. If it was a single digit, it was $9.99, I'd go for it, but it's not. It's significantly more than that. Other public input? Apparently my legs just don't hit everything today. <laughs> Set timer for three minutes. Hi, my name is Robert Travers. I am from Lebanon. Um, so. I want to share a story with you quickly and then I'll get to my main point. So when I was student teaching in 2014 at Bone Eagle High School, I was in a, I was in, I had an evaluation with my supervising teacher. And one thing that she noted was that when I was teaching, I would focus more on one side of the room versus the other. 
Now, last meeting, when we were meeting at the auditorium, I noticed that one side, when there were two microphones on either side of the room, I noticed that one microphone was being, wasn't getting as much attention as the other. As a result, during the second in, in public input statement last time, I did not get an opportunity to speak even though I was in line. And I understand the time ramifications of making sure that we, ran, we were, got, all got home sometime that evening. And if there were other people in either line, I would have been, I would have been okay with it. I wouldn't have been happy, but I would have been okay with it. But the public input was ended as I was the only one in line. Um, I believe that each public input statement gets three minutes. And again, I understand that, that we wanted to get home at some point that evening. However, I don't think three minutes would have made much of a difference. Um, so, how much time do I have left? I have a minute 18. So, I just wanted to note that procedurally, the correct thing to do is for each mic to have to be alternated one, then the other, then the other, then the other. So that way everyone gets a fair opportunity to speak. And like I said, if I weren't the only one, I wouldn't have made I wouldn't have made the point of coming up here and addressing you all tonight. However, I just felt like at that moment my rights as a public member of the of the public of the district weren't 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 um I wasn't given a fair opportunity to speak. Thank you. Other public input? Real quick, I just wanted to address the conversation. Uh, when I said that no students return to class after being sent to the office, there are situations where students are on a plan that they are, if they are removed, they are to take a lap or to check in and then return to class. So that is a, it's important to note that that does happen, and I want to clarify that to make sure that I'm not uh, misspeaking. Okay. Any other public input? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? So we should have them in the first day.